contact. Save happy and creative, stay home and craft. My name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp, as many of you already know, and we're going to be doodling and hanging out for an hour. So I hope that you're there. I hope that it's working. I hope that the sound is good. I know that our friend Jilly is in the building with you and she'll be able to answer any questions that you have. So if you could just, sound is good. Thank you, Jilly. So come on in and, uh, and sh just wave and let me know that you're here and then we'll get crackerjacking. Come on in. Uh, close the door. It's a beautiful autumn, beautiful sunny autumn day today. Colours are absolutely glorious, aren't they? I know. I mean, where are you? Where are you? Uh, we're in, in Crowborough in, in East Sussex. Beautiful place. Come on in, Anne. Good morning. Here they come. Great to have your company, fellow shackers. Yeah, uh, busy, busy, busy we are here at Clarity. And, uh, and how are you? And what's the weather like where you are? It's just beautiful here, and the leaves are changing colour. It's just perfect, isn't it? The days are getting shorter. It seems to uh, it seems to get dark early now, doesn't it? Anyway, come on in, and we'll we'll carry on what we're doing today. Let's see, ginkgo leaves. Let's stay with the leaves. Let's do some leaf art, shall we? You rock. Not sunny here, but a couple of counties over from you. Oh, we're the lucky ones then, eh? Leaf art, come on in, let's let's all settle down. We've been working on ginkgo leaves, haven't we? Last week I wasn't around because we were working on TV, but I'm sure you still remember the ginkgo leaves. And then I dug out some other leaf art because I thought, yeah, you know, yeah, you know. Um, how about this then, hey? Should we have a look? Because this is pretty cool when you actually, um, you create your art on the leaf itself. Just an idea, just a thought. Let me show you. There you go. We've got some huge leaves in the garden. Isn't that nice? Hey, and this one is years old, years old. It's not behind glass. It's just bone dry. Yeah. And then we mounted it. And I used a mask one of our tree masks. In fact, it's the same tree mask as I used on this one. This is canvas board. This I've mounted on just a board, because right, it was bigger, although about the same. And then, and this, this is years old, this one now. Look, and it's still, I mean, I, if I picked it, it, yeah, of course it's brittle, but isn't that cool? And, and just if you fancy doing that, go for a walk, go for a walk check out the leaves, find some really big ones. And then what I did was, as I recall, got to have, they've got to be kind of dry, but not bone dry. It's like pottery, really. Look. So what I did was I sandwiched them. I remember what I did. I sandwiched them between pieces of um, paper towel. And then I put them under a really, really heavy book, left them there for about a week. Every now and again, I'd go in, check that they were all right. And that, so they were flat, right, flat as pancakes, but they were still bendable. They weren't crackly. They weren't dried out. They still had a little bit of life in them, if you like. And then you put the masks on. What ink works? Well, I know that I will have used black archival ink on that. It's quite cool, isn't it? Black archival ink. So you put the mask in, spot on sponge, black archival ink, on the mask. And then this is one of our masks as well. That paint. That's definitely white acrylic paint dabbed through the hole to give you the moon. It's cool, isn't it? And then and then this, this you can splatter it with white paint or you can use one of your white Posca pens, your choice. Give it a go. Get three or four leaves and then have a go. See this one, can you, can you hear? Very crackly. Listen. Yeah. But it still works, okay? I like it that it's a little bit bubbly and lumpy because as it's dried out over the years now, it's started to, to yeah, it's not flat like that, like it is, like it, although that one's, maybe I've just been storing it flat, I don't know. Anyway, that's how it works. And then the edges here, I, while it's still malleable, while it's still like this, got a bit of life in it, 
it's easy to take a brush and a black archival ink and just flick in over the top, just brush, yeah? Just brush with a black ink or with a makeup sponge outwards, smooth it over. Oh, I couldn't do it now, I'd break it all. But in while it's still got some moisture in it, it's easy to put this blackness around the edge. And then where I've picked up the veins, you see how I've picked up the veins so it looks like tr like a tree? That I've done with the brush, just dusting over the top with a really, really dry brush with some white paint on it. Looks good, doesn't it? Looks like leather. Yeah. Nice, huh? There you go. They were made at the same time. Yeah. Different leaves. Different. We've all got different skins, haven't we? Anyway, so I'll put that back. Just a thought. Just a thought, you know. Don't need much, do you? And if you don't have the, the woodland masks, you know, the tree masks and that, I'm sure our friend Jilly will be able to give you the link if you fancy the mask. But think about the other mask, like, ah, oh, do you know, uh, the one with the deer scape. Wouldn't that look fantastic on a, on a leaf like that? Hey, The trees and the deer scape. Or the children. Mm. Do you know, you could do small ones as well. Go for a walk in the sunshine and keep your eyes on those leaves and make a little stash and sandwich them between paper towels and then put a really heavy book on them. I mean, I've got big, a big flower press. I could use that as well. There you go. Food for thought. Good morning. Come on in. Be good, won't it? You know, it costs nothing. It costs nothing. Price of a walk. Hey, price of a walk in the sunshine. A little bit of ink. And most of the people that are watching, most of you good shackers, you'll have an archival ink pad, you'll have a, some spot on sponges or a, or a makeup sponge. White, uh, white archival, white acrylic paint, it's a good call. You do, it's always good to have a little tube of white acrylic paint or a little bottle. Hold on though, because next week it's the, um, it's uh, Black Friday, isn't it? And I know that we've got some paint in, in a super saving um, special offer next week. So you might want to just pump the brakes for a minute and hang on until the sale. Anyway, so we're working on on our on our lovely designer parchment. Do you remember? We're working on our lovely designer parchment. And we do but we doodled these, didn't we? We actually drew these. So taking you back a couple of weeks, anybody who's just surfing the net wondering, well, where did they get that stamp from? Or where did they get that beautiful paper from? Well, the, 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 the ginkgo leaves came out of my garden and then we, we learned how to drew, draw them, didn't we? So that's the first thing, easy. Then we, we even we created this really cool logo. Do you remember? Sort of letter jum, jungle. Love that. Love that graphic. Still got to add that to my, my there or there. I'm not sure yet how small to go. How small can you go? Um, so I'm going to put my, my Ginkgo logo in somewhere there. So these are all my templates now, you see. So down the road, if I want to do more, I'll keep, a, I'll keep these in a safe place. And then I've got my, my, I've got my artwork. Because that there is the top part of that there. Look, see, if I do that, I just used those four, didn't I? But actually, the whole when you look at the whole thing, it was it was a formidable piece of artwork. Yeah, we're talking wall art here, aren't we? Wall art, eh? Yeah, so, you know, you can go large, you can go small. I mean, that's the thing. You're the artist, you see. You're the doodler, you're the artist, you're the crafter. You choose. You choose, you know. You've got to do what makes you feel comfortable. Where, where's your safety net, you know? I remember, you know, I've known fine artists who who have rooms the size of this studio and then they, they, put, they put huge pieces of paper on the floor and then they just throw paint, you know, abstract artists. They work in a huge format four foot by five foot, three foot by four foot, you know, like massive. That would be, for me, m maybe one day, you know, but that's a little bit out of my comfort zone at the moment. So I 
I'm make heart that doesn't it does challenge me but it doesn't panic me do you know what I mean if something's panicking me then I shouldn't be doing it really certainly not at the moment so I always think that small it seems it's it seems safer does it is that is it just me but I think so I think small is safer the larger you go mm. so the lovely thing about this is that of course you're working with small bits I mean how small can you go you know, but um, but you're working with small elements, and then you're, you know, then you're create the sum of the small elements is obviously larger, and and then it's the world's your oyster really. But you're only walk working on little small bite sized pieces. I think that's worth bearing in mind, you know. And the other thing to remember is, what's the worst that can happen? It's a bit of paper and a pen, you know. Chill, chill. Now. Let's get going because what we did was a couple of weeks ago, we transferred our our illustrations to um, we transferred our illustrations to our designer paper, didn't we? So let me just have a look now. Um, just let me. Where am I? Okay, a little bit disjointed today. Do forgive me. Our design our designer parchment. That's what we're looking at. So we we doodled on the on the front. Do you remember the duller side? The duller side, and we gave you a couple of weeks to to see if you we we dropped the price as well because the parchment, the design of parchment is very very beautiful, and so we halved the price of the packs. And loads of you took advantage because it's a phenomenal price anyway. Even at full price, it's still a brilliant price for proper parchment. But this designer parchment now, so we halved the price on the big packs. And then I was talking to Dave. I said, you know, maybe we could make the packs a bit smaller, like half the packs and call them a taster pack. And then our friends could try different colours for even less, if you see what I mean. So because Dave's been off because he had a little bit of a wobble, I brought the parchment home and I asked him to split them. So he's been at the dining room table for a couple of weeks going, two, two, one, two, 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 two. And so that's how to keep the hubby busy. So what we've got now is we've got what we're calling taster packs, all right? And then that way, if you want to try, they're half the – see, the big pads that we were, talk, what we were working on before, these ones, like that, you've got 48 sheets. Now you've got 24 sheets. So it's half as many right? So that's what we've got now. We've got Northern Lights. So it's exactly the same, the six packs. We've got Northern Lights, Indian Summer, Toscana, Waimea Falls, Shenandoah, and Rainbow River. But there's only, there's 24 sheets. So you've still got all 12 patterns, but you've only got two of each. So it's a much, you know, it's a real great little taster idea. And it means that you can maybe do a couple of different ones, you know, try a couple of different ones. And the ones we're working on are, isn't that lovely, that one? That one's the one we're on. Toscana. Toscana. Toscany, Toscany. There we go. So, yeah, so that price has gone down even further now. So normally a pack is £25, and so this time these have gone down to the, – the big pack is now 12 50 and these are down to 7 99 So it sounds like I'm desperate, but it's not that. It's just trying to encourage you to understand the benefits of beautiful parchment and designer parchment because it just injects the colour into your artwork beautifully in these 8 by 8 And it's that bite size, isn't it? It's that lovely. There's a lot of mileage in that pack, you know, even the – taster pack right now on with the work so what we did was we you see you've got a shiny side that's where the color is injected in the designer paper and then on this side you've got the dull side and that's the side that we doodled and what did we use to doodle we used the micron pens yeah so they're really nice that's how we got the the artwork there if you're not sure how i did that then just look back over the last ones now if you go to the shiny side the back the back take your you've got a, eraser pencils haven't you you've got a pink one and then you've got a white one and the white one is the one that gets rid of the 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 color 
See, so if I were to go, I don't want to actually do that because if I do that, oh, okay, look, I'll do it really up here because I want to frame this. This is going to be a piece of artwork, but I can just show you in the top corner. When I take that out, you see immediately, see how it, you, you can take the colour out with the white pen. So I don't, oh, what have I done now? I'm pressing the wrong button, silly me. Right there. See how you can take the colour out with the white eraser? See in that corner. I don't want to do too much because this is going to be for her aim. This is a Christmas present, friends. This is this is a present. Right. So I can take my my white eraser pen and I can make sure I'm on the back because the the black ink's on the front. So that means that when I rub over the lines, look, watch. When I rub over the lines and take out the ink in the ginkgo leaf like that, I'm not erasing, I'm not taking out all the ginkgo leaf as well. Yeah. So that's important to, to understand the back and the front. I'm always checking. I just go like that. If it's shiny, I know I'm on the right side. All right. So what we're going to do now is settle in and just get rid of some of the colour in the back because when we do that have you already done this some and some eh? some and some i'm just going to take my time and do this because i've had hell of a couple of weeks <laughs> and i was really i'm really looking forward to just hanging out with my friends and just doodling and i don't want any pressure on me i've got more pressure on me than is savory at the moment speaking from a from a personal point of view, and so I'm just gonna, I, I'm just gonna chill, yeah, chill. And I want to take the colour out. This is a little bit. Sh sh shall we? Oh, come on, Barbara, push the boat out. Use another one. <laughs> Use a new one. Crying out loud. There you go. Oh, that's better. <laughs> See. So you take the colour out of the back. There we are. Very easy, isn't it? When you turn it over, you're eliminating all this, even in the darkest area. Let's take this one here. Right. You don't have to take it all out, but if you wanted to, you could get some really white. You get some lovely whiteness in there. And the other thing is, like here's the... The, the point of this if I want to make a ginkgo you know you if you I don't know if you're aware that these ginkgo leaves when they come off the trees they go bright 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 yellow like really amazing yellow and we've got a carpet of it uh, in the garden at the moment and so to let me make sure I'm, yeah to reintroduce a yellow in a dark area like this like you can just about see the leaf, which is very arty. But if I want to create a yellow leaf, then the first thing I've got to do is eliminate. See the colour here. First of all, it creates a contrast, doesn't it? Really nice contrast because it, it kind of gives you that translucency. But you see, even in that really dark area now, I'm look. This you can't see the leaf, can you? Should we come in a bit tighter? Come in a bit tighter. How are you? Are you chilling a bit? What a game it is at the moment, eh? It's like um, I've been doing a lot of thinking, and I I don't know. Is it only me? But <laughs> it's like so. You worry yourself sick about one thing, right? And you're worried about that, and then and then you open your eyes, and the next the next thing to worry about comes your way. So then all of a sudden, the thing you were worrying about the day before has been shelved because you've got another more important thing to worry about. And then, <laughs> and then you're going to start stacking them up now. All right, form an orderly queue. <laughs> and, then, and then the next thing happens and you think, hang on a minute, I haven't even dealt with it. I, I'm still worrying about yesterday's disaster. And then... And then and then, would you believe it, the next thing turns up. And then the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. And in the end, you're just looking at this row, and it's going as far back as you can see. But the point is, 
the thing that you were really worried about back way back when you probably can't even remember what it was and you're certainly not worried about it it's been relegated it's like um it's like been, been pushed to the back it's it's like having a, a cupboard full of spices <laughs> <laughs> and and the spice at the back is like oh don't worry about that 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 it's not going anywhere i haven't got there's only so much you can worry about right but what it's teaching me is why bother worrying because it's like um just give it 24 hours and you'll have something new to think about <laughs> so what's the limiting point that's where i'm at at the moment people <laughs> crying out loud this is absurd and it gets to the point where if it weren't so so tragic it would be hilarious you know you couldn't write this you couldn't i can't go into it because it's not my story really although it impacts me a lot but you couldn't write what's going on could you in the world and then and then in a little in my world and in your world then we have got our own little micro crises <laughs> I know, I know. So, once again, I say, right, it is never the event, but how we respond to it that will ultimately affect us. No matter what's going on, you know, it doesn't matter. You can throw all your toys at the pram and have a right wobbly and scream at everybody. It won't make a blind bit of difference. The situation is still the same. The only difference is that you've ex you've irritated everybody around you and they're all running for the hills <laughs> so your support network starts to thin out a bit <laughs> i'll tell you what and breathe it's true isn't it hey what is going on and so and this is the weird thing because then you think okay with taking out colour out of a piece of designer parchment and, oh, hang on, shiny time. So here we are taking colour out of a ginkgo leaf that we doodled two weeks ago. <laughs> I'm glad I found it. Okay, so you're taking that colour out of a ginkgo leaf that you, that you drew a fortnight ago and you're hanging out with a bunch of mates online virtually and the world is going down the tube. That's a polite way of putting it. And you think, well, surely I should be doing something, you know? Well, I am. And so are you, you know? And, and I'm getting to the point now where I'm beginning to realise that there's a lot to be, there's a lot of, isn't that lovely there, look? You know, we're always going on about mindful this and mindful that and mindful the other. Well, here's the news, right? And I've said it in different ways over the last one and a half years, most days. And I say you get out of your head and you get with your hands. You get out of your head and you get with your hands, right? And some of us can do it more easily than others, this, this mindful process, yeah? But I, this is what I'm trying to say is, as, as time is going on and the layers of, 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 of problems and issues and crises and dramas, they keep stacking up, don't they, for us, okay? So you worry about that one, then 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 you've forgotten what that one was, so you worry about that one a bit more, and it's just like, worry, 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 worry. Right, forget it, okay. If you, it's not... Um, it's not productive, it's not constructive, it's not going to help you. But just sitting and doing something like this and concentrating, like now, right, I'm working on that white piece there. And now I'm working on that white piece there. It's lovely. Now I'm going to go into this one. And I'm concentrating exactly on what I'm doing. See, all that bit there, I was waffling. So I did all that for no purpose. Well, I did it... For the execution of the leaf, I sure did, right? But from a healing point, from my headspace point, it didn't really hit the spot because I was talking to you at the same time. So I'm starting to work out more and more 
that that when you concentrate on now, like now, now, when you concentrate on now and what you're doing now, it stops the unconscious mind. It stops all that, all that thinking going on, thinking, 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 thinking. You know, yesterday I was with my mum and dad and, you know, and you, you, it's so difficult to watch your parents getting older and, you know, and trying to work your way through it so that they are safe and comfortable and, 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 and oh, you know, it's hard. And, and I know that most people in, in, in the shack today know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, we're all in the same boat. We are of an age and that's when it starts to happen. And, yeah. And so this kind of work, what we're doing here, right, what it does is it really keeps you in the now, you know. Sometimes I wait, I've been waking up in the night and I worry about my mum and I worry about my dad and I worry about the business and I worry, 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 worry. And now I lie there and then I think to myself, is this thought actually useful? Is it doing anything apart from robbing me of my sleep? Well, do you know what? No, it's not. It's not. It's just disturbing my serenity. And, and, and this kind of thing, okay, doing this kind of simple process now, what we're doing here, especially if you concentrate, like if you go quiet and you just think exactly about what you're doing, just really, I'm, all I'm thinking about is, like, see that little bit of blue there? There. And all the time... I'm absolutely focused on this stuff. It's like the pressure goes off my head because those those thoughts, those that that washing machine head. You know, I talk about a washing machine head. Well, it's in super spin recently, and and the thing is, we 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 seem to be propelling ourselves into a faster moving more aggressive crazy world by the day and we're getting caught up in it and we don't even realize so so things like like we're doing this together so we can chat right but things like making a cup of tea in the morning or cleaning your teeth or washing your hands or there's a there's a, a lady I've been listening to. She's a uh, from New Mexico. She's a, a a Native American Indian, and um, from one of the pueblos. And I've been listening to her. Her name is Roxanne. Anyway, fantastic ceramicist, potter, artist, sculptor, actually. And she um, and she talks a lot about um, this, the way that we've evolved so that we do things as a, as a, like you get up, you make, you get dressed, you make a cup of tea, you, you, you have your breakfast, you do your muesli, you throw the yogurt in, you woof it down. You actually haven't thought about anything that you're doing. It's just, it's a process you've got to go through because you've got to get in the car, got to go to work. Right? And she says, well, actually, the whole purpose of our being is to, is to focus on what we're doing, be in it now. Eckhart Tolle always talks about this stuff. Um, and this New Mexico lady, this Native American Indian, you know, she talks about the real... The, the focus, and she's an artist, so I, it, she really kind of speaks to me, you know. I, she, what she says resonates with me. And she talks about the, the pen or the, the tool and when she's doing the fingers of the, the models and, you know, just... And she concentrates really hard on, on what she's doing at the moment she's doing it. So whether she's clean... Let me make sure it's the right side. She's cleaning her teeth, or she's making peeling potatoes, or hanging out washing, or taking colour out of a, a ginkgo leaf on a piece of designer parchment. 
when you're doing this and you're really concentrating on what you're doing, one, you're stopping, you're stopping the fruitless thoughts. You know what I said about, is this thought useful? Well, mostly not. So you're stopping the fruitless thoughts and the fruitless worry. I mean, I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you here. Um, and the other thing is, it's more respectful of your life, really, because we're devaluing our lives on a daily basis. We don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing my life justice because I'm not, I'm not in it. I'm so worried about what's just happened and what's going to happen and what may happen. And da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not even doing it. I'm not, I'm not in it. Do you, do you hear what I mean? I'm not even in my life. I mean, yesterday's gone. Tomorrow is, God only knows. It's, it's an illusion. It's, it's whatever I can dream up. Right, it hasn't happened yet. So how, how can it be? It's not. It's not life yet, is it? Because it hasn't happened yet. And yet, I spend more time worrying about what ha what's happened, what's ha what's happened, and what's going to happen. Right, and I'm not thinking about now. So I'm devaluing my life. You know, it's it's so precious, and I'm not in it. Crazy, and I think. I'm not alone, you know. And then there reaches a point, you know. Then we're, oh, and then the doctors. Everyone's going to the doctors, and you know. And this is a great way of therapy. That's what I'm trying to say. This is, you know, to. But this, if you struggle, here we go. If you struggle being mindful or staying in the now and staying with your hands, I mean, as as crafters, we're, we're pretty much, we've got an advantage over a lot of people. Believe you me, we are at a great advantage. We are so lucky, right? Um, we really are. Um, oh, I want to show you how to get this bit done, though. We're, we're at a great advantage because we've, we've learned that art helps. It's, you know, it does. It's not a, it's not a cliche, is it? It's a fact. All right, let's have a look. But the other thing is if you do struggle, if you do struggle with this this focusing, because is it do you call do you catch yourself doing artwork and then you're doing that mechanically as well? You know, like when you drive uh, you drive a certain distance and then you get to those traffic lights and you think, How did I get here? I wasn't even in this driver's seat and yet I've driven all this way, you know? <laughs> it's true, isn't it? And then you think, how did I get here? And I think um, that the, the making of the cup of tea, the brushing of the teeth, the, the washing of the hands, the, um, the picking up of the leaves for going for a walk and thinking which leaf would be really brilliant to do art on, um, what shape, what colour, you know, all those things, I think um, that would... All those things are really good training. You know, like when you go to yoga. <laughs> well, I don't know. I went once. I didn't go so well. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, you, don't, you don't become a yoga expert overnight. And I don't think that you become a mindful expert overnight. I think it takes practice. We're at an advantage because we're crafters. So we already know that, you, you know, if you're doing cross stitch or, you know, you've got to concentrate. If you're sewing, if you're doing a quilt or you're, you're knitting, you've got to make sure you don't drop a stitch and you've got to stay straight, you know. You, so you, you're concentrating. And you, you can't, I find, you can't always, you can't often, you can't do art and think thoughts outside of the art simultaneously. And therefore, we're at an advantage. If you struggle with it, though, because then you think, well, I can't just do art all my life just to get off this this washing machine head. What I'm suggesting is that maybe some of those routines that you do every day, you know, like the ones that we've listed, come on, give us some ideas, give us some suggestions. You know exactly what I mean, like peeling the spuds, um, chopping up the carrots, 
you know, because you do that stuff. I, I can only speak for myself. I do that stuff. And that's when, because it's a mechanical, easy, done it a million times, no ironing, you know. We do that stuff and we're not, we're not in it, are we? We're not doing it. I'm not thinking about the carrot. I'm thinking about my mum. I'm not thinking about the spuds. I'm thinking about work. I'm thinking about the bank. I'm thinking about, I'm not doing what I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing, but I can do it without thinking about it. And I've got to train myself to actually think about what it is I'm doing, even those mundane things, because that's, therein lies my relief. You get it? So here's the thing. We've done our ginkgos, let's say, and we've rubbed out the whiteness. Isn't that lovely? So let's have a look. We've turned it, what side are we on? We're still on the shiny side. Now let's turn it to the front. Okay. And we can see now that uh, they pop, they pop, they really do pop. And what we want to do now is reintroduce color and introduce maybe even a little bit of texture because it's parchment. We can do that. So let's have a look. I started on one. Let's have a look here. So if I, that's white, white, right? This has already been there and now it's coming back the other way again. So now you can see there's a bit of, there's yellow coming back in again. And don't get me wrong. If I think, hang on a minute, I've got a bit too much green over that side. I don't like the green there because it's too much like the background. It's not giving me enough contrast. Then what I may want to do, make sure you're on the shiny side, right? Even at this stage, I can still go in and I can add a little bit of white like that. Right. So just a little bit of white there. Do you get it? When I turn this over, I've created a little bit of a difference between its contrast. Now, you may call this pedantic. I call it cheap therapy <laughs> because while I'm getting so finicky, you know, the perfectionist in me needs to be called back out and not the perfectionist that blocks and says, no, 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 it's not perfect. The one that the attention to detail, it's the, you know, when your teacher used to say, pay attention, Barbara. Yeah, because I was always looking out the window, dreaming, thinking about something else. Pay attention. Right. It has a kind of a negative connotation. But when I say pay attention, I mean it in a gentle way, that travel gently way. I mean, pay attention to what you're doing, because when you're paying attention and you're focusing on what you're doing, right, then you're you're in your hands, you're in the now, and I'm repeating myself, but that paying attention, a lot of us are very, very pedantic, aren't we? So take that perfectionism that that can cripple you and say, oh, it's rubbish, it's rubbish. I always used to be one of those people that said, if it's not, if it's not perfect, it's rubbish. If it's not 100% bang on, it's in the bin. Well, there's, there's a lot of difference between bin it and, and perfect. There's, there's lots of levels of loveliness before it goes in the bin but the perfectionist from a from a, a fear of judgment point of view will often say it's rubbish it's gotten in the bin it's going in the bin. get over that right but use that perfectionism turn it round in your head and say hmm that perfectionist now can be my therapist because it's that attention to detail and it's that paying attention it's that focusing focus 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 Mm. Yeah. So the things that you, you could possibly be driving your potty could become your best friend. Yeah. Focus on making the tea. Focus on adding the sugar. Focus on stirring it. Right. Let's have a look. Where are we? We're on the front. So if we want to go and add some color, then I'm going to turn to the back again. And I'm going to use my my pencils you got any pencils we got pencils have we got pencils right i'm going to use my pergo liners for this one here we go nice 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 i'm going to use my b pencils don't matter i can use my a pencils too it's the colors i'm interested in there's a yellow there here he is a20 a20 let's go b20 
Isn't that interesting? So let me just check something out because I don't think, I think adding the color doesn't matter if I use an A pencil or a B pencil. Let me just check this out though. Right, I'm on the back. Right, I'll use the yellow, the water color, but dry. Okay, let me try. And now let me try the yellow waxy one. All right, well, focus, focus, focus. Do I think there's a big difference? Well, one will move with water and one won't. But since I'm not going to try not to spit in my artwork and I'm not going to. So that means then I can use the water soluble pencils or I can use the B pencils because I'm not going to use oil. To, I'm not going to use um, oil to spread out the color. If I want to do that, then I definitely need the B pencils, the blending pencils, because they'll blend with oil. You know what I mean by all? Oh, now I've got, I'm um, paint myself into a corner here, Barbara. Right, there you go, Dorso oil or, or any sort of oil. The B pencils blend and the A pencils, they move with their aqua, they're water soluble. But for the purpose of this, injecting color into our leaves, we can use either or, okay? Defo. Nice, huh? And the thing is, because we're working on the back, this is the magic of the translucent parchment. Because we're working on the back, you can cut across the lines. Look, you don't have to worry because we doodled the lines on the front, so it doesn't change it at all. But see how you can get a lovely, that's really nice. Where's a yellow or an orange? Let me try. There's a nice orange there I'm going to use. A -a Aqua. Because when you look at the leaves, the colours, look, these are, just see why I've used the Toscana parchment too, can't you? Tell you what, though, if you're going to go for it, treat yourself. They're all beautiful. Um, if you like this kind of colorway and, and light sort of pinks and that, the Indian summer's pretty special too. Toscana's, I tell you what, it's difficult to say, but that's why we've broken down into smaller packs because now you can treat yourself to you can treat yourself to. Um, Different colours. There's some really special. They're, they're all beautiful. Oh, I designed them. Let's have a look. I did them myself, actually. Yeah, they're nice. Right, see, so I can add a... Make sure I'm on the right side. Ah, uh, wrong side. Get on the shiny side. So now, I'll leave that where it is. I'm not going to fiddle with it. Nobody's going to know. I went on the wrong side. The shiny side for colouring. That's all right. No, can you see where I went on this side? No, you can't. There. Is that it? See where it's a bit brighter. So that tells me that I could if I wanted to. Let me just try something. Let me just make sure I don't screw this up. Right. Let me be the bus driver here. If I wanted to get rid of it, I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it right where it is. <laughs> there you go. Turn it over. Make sure that you're on the right side when you do this. Uh-huh. So now we've got colours coming in. So we're reintroducing the colours in the background. Nice. If you feel your mind is wandering, not now because you'll be listening to me, so I'm keeping, your di I'm keeping you diverted. But when you're on your own doing this and, and then you think, right, this is easy, I can do this with my eyes shut, then there's the danger that your mind is going to wander. And at the moment, if it wanders into nice pastures, happy days, right? But mine seems to be going straight into a war zone at the moment. Um, so I've got to be more focused than ever. Do you, do you see what I mean? I'm sure I'm not alone. I blimmin' know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. This is, what I'm saying here is, is, I defy anybody to say that. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I might not know what I'm talking about, but I, I'm pretty certain that most people in the shack are in the same boat as me, to a lesser or greater degree. And so, this idea of concentrating on even the mundane things. So you don't have to be a crafter. Just be mindful. Make the bed. Fluff the pillows. But be be with the bed. Be with the pillows. You know? 
Tell you what we're going to do as well tomorrow. Who's going to, who's joining me for the craft along tomorrow night? Hey, let me put this colour in. Doing this. Make sure I'm on the right side. Who's going to come for a craft along tomorrow night at seven o'clock? Huh? I've got a list here I'm going to show you of what you need to bring along. Not a lot. Not a lot. We're having a good time. Right. I've got to, I've got to stop now and show you something. Right. Do you want to see? This is just gorgeous. Okay. So write this in your diary and then I'll tell you what we need for tomorrow night. 7 p.m. Facebook Live. We're going to have a pyjama party. We're having a good Christmas party. Okay. A little bit of distraction, a bit of company. And um, and many, 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 many of you have got those little, you know, the good people, the little good stamps. Right. Hang on. Let me show you the stamps and what you need. And then I'm going to show you because we've already had a couple. Uh, we've already got a couple of visitors, a couple of guests. That have, they're waiting patiently in the wings. They've already crashed the party. All right. Right. You ready? So these are the stamps that we're going to use. OK. So they're on the they're on the website, aren't they? If you haven't got them, it may be a bit late to get them out to you by tomorrow. But it doesn't matter because Facebook Live is always just join in anyway. Just come along. Just come along. Even if you don't, you know, maybe you just want to watch, order the stuff, watch anyway, hang out with us. You know, some people like to craft along and some people just like to hang out. And I don't care whatever's right for you. You just do what's good for you. Right. So I'm just telling you what we're going to be using. So if you fancy crafting along, this is what you need. I wrote it down on a bit of paper for you. Un momento. Or you, or you need the um, the masks as well. Let me just show you. Right. Now, take a screenshot. You need the good gnome stamps. Right. I just showed you those. Right. This is for tomorrow night if you're going to craft along. You need some white card. So I'm going to go with the six by six card blanks. And that lovely sunny, can you see the sun coming through? Right, and we need an archival ink pad. Now I'm going to go with plum. Plum. I think I've got plum here. I hope so. Let me just check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, plum. I wanted to keep it as simple as I can so we can have some fun. Uh, then you need your Perga Colour pens. The Perga Colour pens, now, they're the ones in the tube. Or oh, where are they? I'll find them. They're the, the, not the pencils. These are the perga liners. You could use those as well, though, if you've got them. Don't, you know, don't say, oh, I can't join in because I haven't got the pens. You need the perga colour felt tip pens. And if you're going to use those, you're going to go with a mix mat and water and a little brush, okay, or the nibs, burned in nibs. So we're going to do some colouring in, but we're going to use a paintbrush. And we're going to get in some really tight areas. And then, if you fancy it, we might even... Do a bit of perga glue and glitter. And if we do some perga glue and glitter, then you're also going to need the mapping pen, aren't you? Which I think I've got round here somewhere. Sorry, it's been, it's just been one of those weeks, friends. Yeah, anyway, so if I write it on here, I'll get it added to the, to the list. What did I just say? Mapping pen. So we'll add the mapping pen as well. Right. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Right, so that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to need if we're crafting along. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm already, I'm writing. Because then, uh -huh, do you remember the crackers? Remember the crackers and the postcards? Right. So <laughs> I'm collecting jokes at the moment to put in the crackers. Uh. <laughs> I got a really good one last night. Look, aren't these gorgeous, the crackers? <laughs> it was a really good one last night. And then I just, I was rolling up. You know when you, it's not really a cracker. Well, it would be my sort of cracker joke, okay? <laughs> and it was, anyway, I'm collecting cracker jokes at the moment. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the one in my head. <laughs> Should I tell you it? Hang on, let me think. Should I or shouldn't I? There's this little monkey on my shoulder going, go on. And there's this other little angel going, no, don't, don't. <laughs> He's with it. Hang on a minute. Let me get it right. Okay, he won. So there's this conference of superheroes and they've all got to introduce themselves. 
<laughs> God damn it. Right. Don't touch. Right. So there's this conference of superheroes, you know, Batman and and Robin and uh Catwoman, they're all there. And and then his folks stands up, big fella. And he goes, Stop laughing. I hate people that laugh at their own jokes. <laughs> Hang on. He goes, I'm Thor. <laughs> Thor. I'm Thor. Especially around the throat. <laughs> I'm Thor. Especially around the throat. <laughs> anyway, that's going in my cracker. So when you come tomorrow, to the seven lock, right? Make sure that you bring a joke with you. We need some cracker jokes, okay? We need some cracker jokes. I've got another one about Catwoman. That's it, Catwoman. Terrible. Anyway, I love them. So make sure you bring your jokes when we do our crackers tomorrow because <laughs> you can't have a cracker without a good joke, okay? So that's what we need, manana. And now I'm going to show you, right, you ready? I'm going to show you our two friends that have already crashed the party. This is too beautiful for words. Okay, you ready? Look. They're here, and they're early. Oh! Check out. Look, can you see? Look at the little cup. I know. I couldn't believe it when I opened these in the box. Let me see if I can show you on the... Debbie Powell sent these. Look, 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 look. Come on, look how bright it's getting. This is the day for a walk, Dave. Check out. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Look, you rock. You rock. So that's me and that's Dave. I couldn't believe it. Aren't they gorgeous? Hey? So beautiful. God, it's so, so bright in here. There you go. Now you can really see them. There you go. <laughs> I'm still chuckling about Thor. I'm so th I'm Thor. <laughs> anyway, make sure you bring it. Isn't that beautiful? Debbie, you're an absolute treasure. What a star, hey? So there you go. They're all ready to rock and roll tomorrow. Isn't that superb? Yeah, I know. I was so chuffed when they arrived. It like made my day because, and that's the thing about us crafters, when we make things, Right. That means that Debbie, what even they're lovely and they're just lovely to, to own, you know. But what is really special is that when Debbie was making this, she was thinking about me. Wow. Cool. Do you know what? I think I'm going to have to close that. I hate to. Shut out the, the light. Let me just see what side it's coming from, this side. But I'm actually going to have to just close the blinds for a second so that I, so we could, is that, is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise you can't see what you're doing. It's definitely time for a walk. I want to show you something else. We've got 10 minutes. We've got 10 minutes. Um, and I just want to show you a couple of other things. Yeah, so do join. Uh, in tomorrow or check back with us on Saturday, whatever you fancy, but we'll have some fun. That's for sure. So you see how I'm putting the color in, have a look. I'm putting the color in and I'm putting the color in on the shiny side, AKA the back. So when you turn it over, you've got the color on the front. Now you could take it to next level. And this is where the designer parchment, you must think, crikey, they must have a lot of designer parchment. Well, actually we do. <laughs> we 
we do. We need to shift some parchment. So get some parchment, and we've turned it into little taster packs now, right? <laughs> bargain! They really are a bargain. I mean, 24 sheets of designer parchment, and that's for, what, $7.99? People! So this is amazing. $7.99, and then you still get your, um, your club discount as well. And the thing is, because they're smaller sizes now, you actually get to have diff a, a, more, a, a bigger variety, a larger variety. That's the thing. Okay. But what's interesting about the parchment, and this is because it's coloured, you maybe don't realise it, but parchment is a stretchable material. So that means if I am working on the back now, right, let me see if you can see this. If I put this, put it on the white one now. Let me put it on the, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put this on a piece of black and then offer it up to this camera. And maybe you can see, can you see the white, right, see the white highlights at the top here that I've already started on? See, now that's not done with a pencil. If I touch that, it's actually it's it's embossed so in other words it stands out it stands proud of the car of the paper so that's called white work it's called stretching but what's what fascinates me do you see the little flashes of white here and there just little tiny bits or the stalk so you couldn't get in that there with an eraser let me hold it still for a minute you couldn't get into those areas. See at the base here on the largest one down the bottom. That one there. See the little white bits here. So they are actually, they're embossed. They're embossed. You can feel them. And the way that you do that, let it just focus again. The way that you do that is by turning over onto the back, onto the shiny side. I just want to show you. It's about giving you other, you know, because a lot of you aren't parchers and you don't use parchment, but it's a fabulous medium. And I'd, I would be doing it an injustice if I didn't explain how it works, because this property of it, one of the properties it's great is that you can you can take the color out. We've we've just established that, right? So we can take the color out of the back, and uh, and that's brilliant. And we can reintroduce the color on the back. We know that. Now, what we can also do, provided that we've got a soft a soft back, a soft mat, like a soft soft soft. So so if you're a groover, you've probably got the black mats from the starter kit. But we thought, well. Not everybody wants to spend 50 odd quid on a starter kit just to get a couple of tools and a soft mat. So what we did, well, there's a lot more going on in the starter kit. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But if you just want to do this, then all you need is a, this mat and a couple of tools. So we kind of extracted stuff from the starter kit and turned it into a much more affordable thing. So now it's only 14 pounds and you get, um, you get your, your mat, which is a blue one which is hard on one side, soft on the other. See the grid on this side? I just it irritated me when I was colouring it and when I was embossing. So I took a, a baby wipe and just wiped it off, and it comes off really easily. So that's that. So you get the, the mat, soft and hard, which you need. You get the tools um, from one to four. One, two. So you got they've got really a tiny little ball on the end, number two. Number one, no ball. <laughs> Four. Then you got um, number three, which is a little bit bigger. And then number four, which is great for larger areas. So those those tools there. And you also get, with this, if I'm not mistaken, you get a double-ended eraser. So you get the pink and the white. So all that comes together. And then you've got everything you need to do what we're doing. And it's like £14, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I, I asked that good people look clarity to drop the price to 14 pounds so if you join the club you get another 10 or 15 percent discount and you know what it's very very useful stash so let's have a look and what we need now let me just show you a couple of tricks if you're embossing in the back at the back let me take the one that i have this one because this this will really show you now i've got to work on the back 
shiny side again shiny side and if i let's have a look if i show you the the stalk on this one see if i can i show you this stupid not on let me show you on white right let's have a look at the stalk on this one if i offer it up to the top camera can you see that can you see the stalk on this one it's in there it's drawn see it but it'd be quite a challenge to pull that out with an eraser pencil out of that darkness. So, soft matte. I've got rid. I don't need. I actually. Another another thing that's a good idea. If you put just a piece of white copy paper, or often parchers, what they use. Let me just grab one. They use a poly bag, like um, something like this, right? Something like that, like a layer of poly bag, just split it. And when you put that underneath there, like that, right, then um, it it kind of acts as a, it's not quite as soft. It, it resists the softness of the mat. So when you're starting out, especially if you're using the smaller ball tools, um, it's quite a good idea to put a bit of copy paper underneath or a bit of po a poly bag, okay? See, the white under here helps me because it it I can see my lines. You see, I can see exactly what I've drawn. Bearing in mind, I've drawn it on this side. So now, let's have a look. You can't see it. Now, let me take my tool. I'm going to take, I'll go with the number two tool because I reckon that that will, that will be right. So I'm going to come along here now with my, with my, my number two tool. I'm on the shiny side. I've got the right glasses on. And I'm going to I'm going to love you and leave you on this note because Paul uh Paul Church he's up in Peterborough at the studios and he's about to go live at 11 o'clock which is any minute now so when you hang up from me just tune into the craftstore.com okay and tune into Paul because he's just about to entertain you. And I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he he actually explains all about parchment. Not that we've talked today, but now let me show you this, though. See the white now? If I put this on black, that's what I wanted to explain to you. If I, if I offer that up now, you should be able to see that I've gone right in on that line and I'm able to go, see? And that's... That's how it works. If you if you're using, let me see, on this one here, if you want to get this lighter, you see, then you come over onto the back, always working on the back when you're doing the embossing, and you use the larger balls now, the, the larger um, ends, okay? And you just, when you go in like this, you stretch. See, go in like this and you stretch the parchment. Now, this is quite, quite soft, right? So if you, so it doesn't go like cauliflower, you could use this or a poly bag. And then when you, when you do this, it's, it, it's not quite as radical. It doesn't go as white as fast. See, so then you can just, you start see and you build up your whiteness and if you want to get really lovely highlights like flashes of white then you use your your smaller ball tools but it's a really lovely way to add highlights see and even where it's really where you've put color down right if i go in there i can bring the i can bring the whiteness here but what's fascinating is if the black ink is on the front the black ink stays black. You can't, I couldn't put, I couldn't go in here, like on that black bit. If I push that black bit, when I turn it round, it's still black. It won't, it only, the black is black, which is a good thing. So there you go. But you can see how, if you look at this little area here, how you can create depth by going in with those light styluses on the back, on a soft mat. And, and, you know, going back to what we were talking about with the focus and the, the pay attention, right? You really do. You do one little line at a time. You have to concentrate on how hard you're pressing. 
And in that moment, when you're focusing and your all your all your concentration is on that little white work with that little stylus, and then making sure that you don't press too hard and concentrate. Not only do you create beautiful art, but you stop that subconscious thinking and it keeps you focused on what you're doing. And therein lies our our relaxation, our relief from what's going on in our heads. Okay. So I'm going to love you and leave you. I shall see you tomorrow night at seven o'clock, I hope, with my two little buddies. With my two little buddies. And we're going to have a good time. Bring some jokes. I've got more up my sleeve. I've got more up my sleeve where that one came from. So we'll have a crack. And um, and Paul's on, on the other side, on the, not on the other side, on the, on the craft's door right now as we speak. Thank you, Julie, for all your help. I don't think there's anything else I want to tell you. No, get your sampler packs, get your taster packs of parchment because I'm not done with that parchment yet. Next week when we get together, we'll, um, we'll take it to the next level and we'll do some, some beautiful reads and we'll see how small we can go with the ginkgo. Okay, so thank you for your company. And I shall see you tomorrow night. Lots of love. Bye-bye now. And thanks, Jilly.